Hi, I'm Lola Lorber, a patient care advocate with Progeny. Before we dive in today, we just want to remind you to subscribe to our channel. We're posting videos featuring fertility experts weekly, and by subscribing and liking these videos, you'll be helping others to find them. The birds and the bees that conversation many of us have with our parents at an awkward age when we learn everything there is to know about just how easily we can get pregnant if we aren't careful. Well-meaning parents everywhere are doing their best, but there are some pieces that are often left out of the birds and the bees chat. Like, what if you're not ovulating? What role does cervical mucus play in all of this? And today's topic, how many eggs do women have and when will they run out? That's a long way of saying that today we're going to learn about ovarian reserve, and we're going to do it with the help of an expert, Dr. Ashim Kumar, a reproductive endocrinologist and director of Western Fertility Institute. So without further ado, let's dive in. What is ovarian reserve and how does it work? So I think the concept of ovarian reserve is really an interesting concept. And I like to start at the very basics. So if we take a, a think about boys, when boys are born, boys make no sperm. Boys go through puberty, start making sperm, and they'll make sperm their entire lives. So they're actively making sperm. Girls, on the other hand, when they're inside their mother's womb at 20 weeks gestational age, they'll make all the eggs they'll ever have. And that is approximately six to eight million eggs. But the interesting thing is that the vast majority are lost prior to birth. So at birth, we're already down to about one million, and at puberty at age 13 or 14, we're down to three to 400,000. At age um, 37, approximately 25,000. So if we do the math, that's 1,000 to 1,500 eggs being lost on a monthly basis. And these eggs are not always there able to grow. Any given time, three months prior to that, the, given, uh, the follicles that are able to grow at that point were given a signal saying, hey, this is set of 30 eggs, 20 eggs, five eggs, whatever the scenario may be, you're the ones that are the chosen ones that are trying, going to try to make a go of it in November. And if the right hormones are there, meaning FSH and LH, the eggs will start to grow. If they're not there, then the eggs will degenerate and then another batch will present themselves. So that now what we realize is that for someone with uh, cancer who cannot wait uh, for the period to start or for a specific time in their menstrual cycle, if we expose that individual to FSH and, LA, FSH and LH at any time during the menstrual cycle, she will grow uh, follicles appropriate to whatever would be anticipated given her um, AMH or uh, ovarian reserve. So the idea that we have a given number of follicles um, at any given point is a very important one to realize. Just because the overall egg count may be in the thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands, doesn't mean that we can access those eggs at any given IVF cycle. Only the ones that were stimulated to grow three months prior to that month are the ones that are willing to respond to the hormones that we add to the body. So there you have it. We have more eggs than maybe we thought, but the most important factor is the number of eggs that are being called the month we are trying to conceive or starting our fertility treatment cycles. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe because that will help others find it. Also, if you want a ton more information about fertility treatment or anything else fertility related, we have it for you at progeny.com education. And if you want to hear stories from people who have experienced these treatments, check out This Is Infertility wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. Thank you.